give permission? I already have. There or have one. I? <laughs> All right, Google says we're live on Facebook. Which reality are we in right now? The in between of the two. Oh man. I'm looking forward to that nines moment, you know? Oh, that would be a good one right now. Yeah, that's a great film for right now. All right, let me see. Share to. So ask Sky anything. Welcome to the AJA. <laughs> ask Jason anything all day long. Nope. Never in S A A S A. Okay, got that posted. Closing this. Let's do this thing. Yeah, go for it. I think they're asking you the question. Never, never. I think you'll do one eventually. It'd be pretty fun. Think so? Yeah, I can ask you the questions only. I think people would appreciate that. If you agree, you should put in the comments below that, that you would really love to do an ASA. I think people would rather hear from you. How about you have a better point of view than me? Yeah. How? I don't know. Just keep it. <laughs> All right. We are live in Meow. And we have 50 plus questions, I think, actually. So <laughs> I love how. We get questions right up until the end. I bet you there's people still sending questions actually. So we will do our best to get to all of them. Thank you everybody that has sent questions in. Um, yeah, we actually, we have, I think almost the same as last time and we like rapid fired it. So okay. we'll see how we, it goes. Well, if we get through all of them, we get through all of them. If we don't, then we'll just do another one next month. Eventually there won't be any more questions because everyone will have their own answers. Ooh. Secret of life. Good one. 42, the end. <laughs> I had that flash last night when I asked you about my wrist and I knew I was like, I just need to take some time and tune into my wrist and talk to it. I was like, Jason, what's going on with my wrist? I'm in so much pain. And I knew, I was like, why, why are you doing that? But anyway. Like I uh, said, one day I will be irrelevant and it will be a glorious day. Well, in the meantime, we have 53 <laughs> questions for Jason. Welcome everybody to the Ask Jason Anything um and do you want to do any like an energy update that with this in between yeah i can do one real quick so the best way to describe what's been going on and why it's so weird is imagine that you're at a beach and there's a dock and you're on the dock and you're fishing for things that you want to work on and resolve right but every once in a while you see people like floating up and screaming ah, help me, help me. and your job is to not get distracted by that because if you're fishing and you're doing what you need to do, you can just throw a line and then go back to doing what you're wanting to do. And the thing is, there's a tide in that ocean of emotion that moves people around. So they might come up here one time and over there another time. That world is almost over. We're almost all on the beach now. And that's a big deal because when we're no longer like divided in the world, we all get to work together. And that's when human, like it's just, wow you know human collaboration massive massive change in the way the world works well it's not that we can't get in the ocean or anything like that it's just that we won't be drowning in it anymore so we're still going to have an ocean we're still going to be able to experience those emotions but the ability to drown in them will be very little if at all and entire groups of people being under the ocean and entire groups of people being above the ocean and that separation over and so that's one of the reasons why I'm like really excited about what's going on right now. And we're in the last 24 hours right now, a little bit over 13 hours, a little under 13 hours, it looks like. So we're getting there, guys. Just enjoy the rest of today as much as you can. There's all the things you need to. And keep in mind that this doesn't change the world in a way that makes it where we just wake up the next day and a light switch effect, uh, effect hit and we're all just like, oh, yay, the world's perfect again world was always perfect we just couldn't see it so we still have to clean up the thing that's keeping us from seeing it and what that means is when the world literally does shift over and we're done with everything then it's everything that shows up is real 
And we have to face the real truth of where we are, what we've done, how we got where we are, all of that. And the answer is always forgiveness. Because if you're alive to see tomorrow, which almost everyone will be, if you're alive to see tomorrow, then you've earned the right to live in the new world. So forgiveness, acceptance, and letting go of every memory of what you thought was real and letting other people show you what is real. And that's a hard one because there's times where we're like, oh, but this person did this thing to me 20 years ago. Did they? How many timelines have transferred since then? My entire history may or may not be true anymore, depending on who I talk to. That's a weird statement. It's a real statement, but it's a weird statement. There are people that believe I lived in England for part of my life, never been to England. There are people that thought that I ran a uh, Tantra clinic in England, never been to England, like I said. All kinds of weird conversations I've had. I had somebody that said I dated them that I know I never dated. There's a world where all the timelines met, 22 different realities, all in one reality. We have no idea what's true anymore about the past, but we're about to figure out what's true about the future. We're about to figure out what's true about today, right? We're about to be in that space. And that's important to understand because all that has been could have been or might not have been. And in these last few weeks, a lot of people went bonkers, like straight up bonkers, insane level of bonkers, said things that made zero sense from all kinds of people. That's okay, because that was not tomorrow. Tomorrow, let everybody have another chance in life. Now, it doesn't mean that you give them the same level that you did on, on day one when you first met them for the first time, but do your best to forgive them to move on. So if you are having issues with a boyfriend or a girlfriend or family members or whatever, this time that we come into the holiday season, just let all of it go. Actively work on letting go and forgiving everything that has been so that you can come into this new world ready because that's where we come from. We come into that space of collaboration when there isn't density or distortion between us. And that's where we're headed. So just remember, enjoy the ride and forgiveness is key. All right. Beautiful. Clean slate. All right. So thank you for that update. That was awesome. Um, like I said, we have like 53 questions. What And some are, uh, we have multiple from people. So we'll go through the first one from everybody. Uh, I'd like to get some to, to some audience questions if we can, because um, I know some people will have questions there. So yeah, we'll just see how it flows. And ready to rock? Yep, let's do it. So Alan and Rachel are asking, would you consider doing a live more on the body part things like knees being how you move forward and calves holding knowledge? A live on it. Oh, like on explaining the body. I, I feel like it's a really important journey for you to figure out what your body means. When I say that knees are the ability to move forward, that's what I've learned about my body, right? And calves being the divine intelligence, that's just how the energy runs. But Still, I mean, and there are some things where we have a lot of similarities, but one of the greatest things you're ever going to do is just ask your own body. Be like, hey, what are you, shoulder? Why, why do you exist? And shoulder be like, because I hold your arm. You're like, oh, okay, well, I guess we all have that in common. Well, what else do you exist for? What's your energetic meaning? What's your purpose? Why, why am I feeling the way that I'm feeling around this? Why is there pressure here, right? That is one of the greatest things you're ever going to do. The reason I say that this way is it's kind of like asking somebody else to teach your child and to learn from your child and then to tell you. It wouldn't be the same thing as raising that child and learning from that child. It's still possible. You'll still get some value, but your body is a child that wants to tell you everything. All you got to do is listen. So I would recommend more so learning from your body than learning about my body through me. AJ. <laughs> Yeah, I felt it last night with my wrist. And then, of course, once I took the time, I was like, I know what it's telling me. It's it, like, I know the connection. It's right there. And sometimes, I don't know, for me, yeah, it's like looking at it and doing the work. And sometimes with the pain, it can just be overwhelming. And yeah, it it's, 
it's like I've had this pain in my wrist before and it's gone away also. Like it can just switch like that. So clearly there's something there. Anyway, very resonant for me as well. Can I answer when you asked me, ninjas? That wasn't the answer. No? Okay. No, win some, lose some. Still relevant. <laughs> I did like your answer. Yeah. And then when I turned back inward, I received more. There you go. All right. I feel like I feel like the answer to everything is ninjas, though. I agree. I agree. I think ninjas are the answer to everything. Unless you're into pirates, in which case, eh. In which case, you're not welcome here. <laughs> well, I, I have friends that are that are more into pirates, you know, so. Which reality, though? Man, it's going to be well, a weird... A long, long time ago, galaxy far, far away, there was this whole thing called ninjas versus pirates. And it, it was like a rave phenomenon. I think it happened in clubs too. This is back when I was a raver. Full disclosure, I was a raver at some point in my life. And, you know, it was really interesting to see who of my friends dressed up as pirates and who of my friends dressed up as ninjas because there is definitely something there to, to explore for sure. Interesting, interesting. We should do a poll. Okay. It's really fascinating. Because it, it's just, it's kind of like, what's your favorite animal? Same concept, except I found that the world really either really likes pirates or really likes ninjas. And for whatever reason, nothing wrong with that. Just different. Kind of like dogs and cats. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That'd be a good, some good questions to add into like job interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Whole new structure to this. Okay. Yeah. Moving along, Susie asks, can you share the significance of 965? And I think that's on your profile, your Facebook, um, like the numbers that show up in your Facebook profile. So I don't know if that was intentional, but I think that's where it uh, That was not intentional. So as, as good as I am with technology and a lot of other things, and Skylar will attest to this, I really am not good at this whole social media thing. So when I created my profile, it just gave me that. And then everybody was like, you know, you can change it. And I couldn't figure it out. So I just left it. And now people just make a joke out of it. So no, there's no significance of 965. It's just there. Cool. Uh, Lynn asks, what might happen if you place source seeds in the openings at both ends of a Tibetan Varja Dorch? Meditating, holding both ends as a conductor of sorts, maybe saying it wrong. I'm not sure. And I might have messed up the, uh... oh, did we freeze? Uh, I guess you probably should definitely do it then. That's uh, that's that's what I would I would do there. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about when you say the word you said, but putting source seeds with any technology on the planet and letting them like learn from each other is not a bad idea. So you could probably enhance the quality of and the connection to, and then just explore from there, right? But I mean, there's no danger to putting source seeds with any spiritual technology of this world. I mean, you can put them with books, you can put them with anything really. So there's no, no issue there. Um, I do love putting them with crystals. They have really great conversations, which is fun to watch. I love how they have little personalities. It's awesome. They very much do. Oh yeah. <laughs> Adriana asks, I know many are having heart challenges related to the sun's activity. The folks who are experiencing, experiencing an increased heart rate related to sun's activity, is this something that balances out and normalizes as energy moves and integrates? It depends on the person, right? Because as the light shines through, it only pushes against that which resists it. So if you have any issue with yourself or any issue with like what you could become, for instance, which is a lot more common for people these days, then yeah, it's going to push against that. If you haven't forgiven yourself fully or forgiven others fully, it's going to push against that. The heart usually is something that is, is really letting you know that there's something going on between you and the way that you understand the world. And that almost always translates the way that you understand God. Because the more that you understand your connection in, in that way, the greater the things are. When, when I look at reality, I look at three principles and that's it, super easy. You have principle one, which is access. And that's your ability and your connection to God right? And you can make God whatever you want in your own mind. I don't care. But it has to do with that, which is basically the amount of expansion you can go up and around, right? And then you have impact. And impact is the capability that you have 
to change or influence the world around you, right? So the thing is, if you go one way or the other, it often leads to extremes. But if you go both at the same time, then a new principle forms, which I call the solution. And the solution is more like a presence, a present state of the solution. So instead of looking for answers, instead of expanding yourself to find answers, you live and become the answer. And that's kind of the way that I look at it. So the people that are, are expanding this way or expanding this way are often the ones that experience heart issues. Uh, they also often are the ones that experience lots of body issues because they're expanding in one way, which leads to extremes, which puts pressure on the body. And the more that we misunderstand or mistranslate reality, the more pressure we have. Makes sense. I experience, so this is an anonymous one. I experience again and again situations in my job where I give all I've got and where I work a lot for very rare results. And then another person appears and gets all I wanted and worked for without any effort. What can I do about that? Well, I mean, you're obviously working harder than you want to work because you're building up something called resentment and resentment makes it impossible for you to be seen. So it's very, very, very possible. In fact, pretty much guaranteed that you won't be seen, which means that they'll hand over the thing that you want to the person next to you instead of you. Fair exchange, answer to all things. If you can find out at the level that you should be putting your power and pressure to, at the same level that is received, you create something called fair exchange. And in that trade, you're always seen and always met. So figure out whether you're overgiving or undergiving and figure out how to balance that out. Many times, many times over, a nine to five job or a corporate job doesn't ask 110% of you because there's not enough room for your creativity to shine through. It's a very soul crushing level job. So most people can do a nine to five job with 20% presence and learn everything they need to learn. Does that mean they should stay at 20% presence? No, you fair exchange. So if you know you're being balanced at 20%, you show up at 20%. The next day, you're probably going to be being balanced at 30%. And you have to keep going, right? Because you incrementally grow into that. It's kind of like if you were to have the real truth, the absolute 100% truth show up in your life right now, everyone on this planet would be blinded permanently. Every single person. It's too much light too fast. So instead... It's being raised incrementally to allow us to move to that next level of light, stabilizing the next level of light, and then hand us the next level. Fair exchange is the same way. You'll find that the world around you will meet you in fair exchange and will then ask you to grow and will give you the resources to grow. Love it. Uh, fair exchange video will be good to post too. Mm -hmm. Wow, that seems like a really long time ago. <laughs> so weird how long time has been since then and yet not from a calendar perspective anyway it's bizarre like even coming up until the 10th like how it felt like the longest journey and then I talked to someone else that was like that time flew and I'm like this makes no sense <laughs> yep again 22 different timelines in a single timeline it's gonna be bonkers until we figure out what's true and that's gonna take time yeah get our popcorn ready once again <laughs> Yeah, well, once once there's no more resistance to the truth, it's just going to be open season for the truth, and it's going to be amazing what happens. But it's going to be going to be weird for some people, for sure. Like that video I posted about like cultism and understanding cultism, whether you believe it's the left or right or whatever, it doesn't matter because I believe that both sides are equally to blame for the thing because you can't polarize anything. But the answer isn't that, it's, it's the fact that it laid it out so cleanly. That's the answer to what's so important because then you can ask, okay, well, in what way am I following these and other realities and other things that I'm doing? Because humanity is easily entrained, easily entrained, which means that we can go and be stuck in a group and we'll stay in that group no matter how much pressure, no matter what's pushed on us until we run through the group. And in a lot of ways that was exploited for humanity on this planet. Does that mean that it will always? No, because humanity is strong. What that means is eventually humanity will break that groove 
and that group will never ever exist again. And that's where we're coming to now. We're breaking that group. We're coming out of that. And it will never ever exist again, which means that we will have learned so much so that we will not let ourselves ever slide into it again. And that is what causes the change. And any time that we come into an ascension where one timeline goes down, another timeline goes up, and it splits from a master line into an ascension line, this always happens. It's called in time madness. And a group of people for all clinical purposes are insane and their insanity becomes the norm. And the people that fight that insanity within themselves and actually acknowledge truth and become an example of it, not through violence, but simply just presence alone. Usually those are the ones that move forward and the ones that are like lost so deeply that they can't find their way out. They have an example now and they're given time, a duration. Uh, it's not set by people, it's set by something else. And then they can choose to leave that. And if they do, then whenever the transition occurs, they go up into the next dimensional game and the others go back down to start that game over again to process and learn. And again, nothing bad or evil or wrong, anything, it's just, just a game. So on that note, the false matrix we are in is Metatron and his cube truly corrupted. So basically it's keeping us stuck. Yeah, I don't really do that whole Metatron and cube, Metatron grid being corrupted or uncorrupted thing because if you zoom out far enough out, you realize like everything that's happened was part of a plan. Humanity had choices, had feelings, had experiences they needed to go through. And the people that were here provided that example and they're no longer needed. And so the world becomes much better, faster. Does that mean that this was bad though? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, like for me personally, I agree that for me to have done those things, it would absolutely be bad. But for them to do those things, I'm not them, I don't know. They could literally be following their directives perfectly. In fact, I would assume that they are because I'm not them and they never came to me and said, hey, we really screwed up, we need your help. And therefore I look at them as doing their job. Am I grateful that their job is no longer needed on the planet? Very much so, very, very much so. At the same time though, I can be grateful for their job because it did bring us to a point where massive change will happen. And I mean, like, I literally think that within the next 10 years on this planet, no one will even care that we went through what we went through, but we will be remembering that we went through this so that it never happens again. That's exciting. So this person's asking, I have heard you mention your mom on some of the lives, but not your dad, just curious about him. My dad's awesome too. He just is very different than my mom. Like my dad was always working. So I didn't really see him that often. And because of that, he wasn't really the same level of influence as my mom. My dad was a firefighter. Uh, he was very deeply in the church. So if you understand much about that, but on top of that, he had his own building company. So when he wasn't at the firehouse, he was always building houses. And when he wasn't doing that, then he was always at church events and doing church things. Firefighters, they work whole days, usually several days in a row, and then they have days off where they don't. So it's the, one of the few jobs where you're like there for 24 hours or 48 hours, right? Depending on overtime and other things. So my dad was in my life, just wasn't really that much of an influence in my life. And then my mom and my dad divorced when I was young. So I chose to live with my mom. So it was a little bit more difficult in that sense that I didn't really see him that much. And in the phase of my life where it was really, really, really important, he wasn't really there. And again, that's not anything on him. He's a great man. He does what he does. My mom's just the person that I've been with my whole life and has really, really understood and helped me and gone out of her way to help me a lot of times. And I will never forget that. Beautiful. Kim's asking, what is your awareness on using source seeds during sessions? I combine coaching and energy frequency, and I'm more than curious about placing a couple in belly buttons if it shows up during a session or third eye or wherever. Yeah, I mean, if you can get one to stay on the third eye, that's impressive. Like you should video that because that's a miracle in itself. But that being said, uh, the belly button is, is a powerful way, especially like with massage and other things, because that biophotonic energy running into the body as you're manipulating and breaking out the negative charge in the body, because that's what massage is, right? 
you're breaking up the inflammation, which is misunderstanding. Having something that automatically floods back in is huge. For many, many, many years on this planet, healers use crystals. They would put crystals on certain points and then they would do the work so that the crystals would download into the form because it was harder to store that information within their own body or they didn't really know how to do that yet. I think source seeds are a really great way, especially with the infinite feedback loop that they build. So I would encourage you to explore that and let us know what you learned. Cool. Yeah, bathtub belly button journeys are fun too. <laughs> yep, hot yeah. tubs are way more fun. Ooh. I have like, I think almost 10,000 source seeds in my hot tub. Oh my God. That must be so epic. I can't even imagine. It is very epic. One day you're going to come for a stay. You'll, you'll learn all about it. Oh, I can't wait. All right. So Vicky asks, I've been wanting to ask about soul leaks within the process of ascension timelines collapsing. I've fallen into a spinning vortex with a beloved from a different lifetime. He is married in this one. And it's so confusing to me sometimes why he is married and I feel so delusional for the last five months. Like I could not get myself out of love with this person. I think I'm finally on the way out. As soon as I asked for help from my guides, the ache of missing this person began to soften. How do we keep our soul fields from leaking into other timelines that have nothing to do with the now and maintain grace? Well, I think that the important part is realizing that you are infinite in an infinite world that's been taught that it's finite. So it's hard, right? Because you run into somebody, your sub-personality, an infinite version of you, just like you, but from a different time and space continuum, comes forward. And all of a sudden, it's like, hey, I want to work on these things. This person has these things that I want to work on. And oftentimes, we don't really take a pause necessary to go, OK, I acknowledge that you want to work on these things. I acknowledge that I'm an infinite being, and I acknowledge that they're an infinite being. And I acknowledge that in this time and space, this isn't necessarily the time to work on these things in the way that you might want to. So what are some ways that we can work on these things to heal together? And I feel like that's a hard question to ask because the energies, the hormones, all the things are pushing you to do everything right away. But one of the things that I do when I run into those connections is it I take like a really long time in the space with the person either through eye gazing or through just holding and letting the energies do what they've got to do because their energies have to do the same thing before I'm fully myself. When I'm hundred percent back in the driver's seat and I'm not allowing my body to do any actions through body mind perspective, then we sit down and we explore and talk about what it really is and that what's really coming through for us to do. And many times over, it's just having really a good conversation as that wholeness and that other wholeness, which dissolves those ridges that are what you're talking about. Because partner ridges are a real thing. And now that we live in a world where all these different timelines are in one timeline, there are lots of partner ridges, lots of partner ridges. I mean, it's insane the amount of partner ridges that exist. And keep in mind, some of these ridges were formed billions of years ago. So the amount of pressure that they hold, billions of years ago, we could live for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. What if you were with that person for thousands of years and you're like in your 40s here? The pressure that's going to push through is going to weigh more and have more weight to it than you do until you know yourself. And I think that that's one of the reasons why this twin flame thing and this like soulmate thing has gotten so crazy on this planet is because instead of acknowledging I'm Jason now, I'm not blank from then. People are saying, I'm blank from then. They're changing their name here. And then they're trying to play out the world as if they're this thing that they were about before. We chose to be different here. We could have chosen to jump back then there. Totally possible. Time is not a linear progression. You can jump here, you can jump here, you can jump here. In all of your infinite nature and all of your wisdom that you've ever known, you chose here. Why? Because you knew that this was the point that you needed to learn something in that would lead to whether it was this or this, right? The worst thing we can ever do is try to be something that we're not from then or from our future self and think that that will actually get us where we wanna go. Because we designed this life for ourselves, named ourselves, built our bodies the exact same way that we built our bodies. Like everything about us is absolutely perfect for what we're here to do. And the more that we come into acceptance of that, the greater connections we're going to have and the more we'll be able to remain ourselves. 
Oof, I think that's gonna help a lot of people. <laughs> wow. And with all the, the walk-ins coming in with that, those partner ridges probably increased in the energetics of all of that, right? Yeah, man, I don't even want to talk about it. I, I, so many, so many, so many people on this planet now that are ready for me to connect to. It's like, like that, you know? One of those moments where you just like, can't really think, you can't really see. And at the same time, you're also fully present. And so you're just like stunned in time and space. That's how I feel when I think about the amount of people I'm going to be meeting over these next few years on this planet that I haven't seen in, in eons. I'm just like, so I'm looking forward to it. Also extremely nervous and uh, excited, but also extremely nervous. Oh, why are you nervous? Because the intensity of those connections mm. is going to test everything that I know about myself. And I'm totally okay with letting go of things that aren't true about who I am. But I also know the intensity of some of these connections because I remember them from those realities. And I can feel how intense it's going to be to even be able to be in the space. I might not even be able to breathe in some of those connections. I've made connections in this life where the moment that they came in, I, I started turning purple because I couldn't breathe. Literally my body, was so activated that there was no way to function. Like I couldn't think, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't even tell myself to breathe. I just started to like lose my consciousness and almost die. So, and those connections were here already available. The ones that just came in, some of those connections, it's, it could literally kill me to run into them in real life. So Whoa. I've got my work cut out for me. Lots of prep, I'm sure, and like yeah, bodies. oh yeah, and that's where why I don't think we're gonna run into those connections until like May and August of this year, or, or yeah, technically this year, but calendar year next year, uh, because we have all those layers that we still have to clear through, and I, I think that the end of May is when we're gonna finally finish all that, and then it'll be time for like the greatest homecoming we've ever known. But until then, like I know that they're gonna trickle in but they won't be the ones that cause me to like almost die because I know that there will never be put anything in front of me that I can't handle. So until I can handle it, it won't interact. It won't interlock. That makes sense. But just thinking about it, like I almost like can feel myself lose my ability to communicate. And it's not like, and for the record out there, it's not like sexual soul, like connections, like, Oh, I'm going to get married to this person thing. It's like, brothers and sisters at levels like just it's just the amount of information right because one cell holds an infinite amount of information that's a, a pretty hard thing for us to gather we don't really understand that imagine if the amount of cellular information from another person was equal to the amount of cellular information from you other than one percent your entire system would shut down you would not be able to function the amount of cellular matching that we're going to be going through and the proximities is going to be ridiculous. It's going to be out of this world, literally. And those experiences are going to be catalysts that allow our body to reshape itself and their body to reshape itself. And there are tons of ways to do that. So we'll find the best ways. But the most important thing I can tell anyone out there is really, if you do run into these connections, celebrate it, right? But don't play out the life that you were. Play out the life that you are. And let them play out the life that they are. And if they get lost in the life that they were, sit there with them and stay the life you are and communicate. Help them to come back into themselves. Because when you are you and they are them, then you can make decisions about how you want to play the game. I've been there. It's so easy to get lost in it. Especially when, like you said, that everything comes flooding in. And then yeah. not only are you experiencing it, but the other person's experiencing it, and then you're going into those experiences and it's like, whoa, like it's like, yeah, it could feel like too much to handle all at once. Mm -hmm. Wowzers. But yeah, definitely exciting. Thank you for sharing all of that. That's super helpful. And I think we'll get, I'm sure we'll get lots of questions as we go on that. It's, it sounds like it's going to be very exciting times. It really will. And with the layers that we're going to go through together, it's going to help us to thread ourselves into ourselves even more 
so that when we do have those levels of connection, we don't lose ourselves as much. Nice. Yeah, going into it stably. Exactly. So this one, um, so they're asking about if we have a video on what happens to the mother's body that brings in a high soul through birth. I know we touched on this a little bit with the last Q&A, but slightly a different question. Um, if the child doesn't make it, what happens to the mother's body? So this person lost a baby at six months pregnant, but was able to carry the next one with much assistance from medical interventions. Hardest one I had, bed rest for three months, couldn't stand for showers, only took baths, et cetera. Um, remained healthy after they got him breathing and the jaundice went away. I believe this to be my awakening time. I believe he assisted me, but damn, the body took a beating, took me yep. years to feel okay again. So it's called priming and it's pretty normal. A uh, high level of children usually prime the body, which can be like a miscarriage or many children prior to is also a thing. And the way it works is each child that comes into the body interfaces its ridges inside of your ridges and it works within your ridges and the, the father's ridges, right? So both of those ridges, the things that they have not solved, the trauma and lineage karma, all that stuff, it exists. It's what forms the density that helps the child to form. And so you're actually embodying that density. And during that time of your pregnancy is the most important time ever to do inner work, ever. Because for the, that time, you have the capability to resolve the ridges of that child before it comes into form. Super powerful. But after the sixth week, when the soul enters the body, and begins the process of vibrating out, that's when your body begins to take cellular shifts because it's literally the cellular child and the cellular mother are in the same body for that duration. And each day after that duration of the six week, it's more and more of that unraveling and spinning and healing. And also for many people on this planet, the mother's not really aware of her process for whatever reason here on earth, it's, it's not the same way that it is on many other planets that do have children this way. Because usually during that time, the mother is taken care of completely. Not that she doesn't work and other things that she wants to, but that there's not this strenuous thing. There's a lot more meditation. There's a lot more communion, a lot of connection that occurs. And that helps tremendously with the body not needing as much. But if you do have a high level child, your body at the end of it, when, when the child leaves, has a lot of learning to do if you weren't really paying attention during that. And that could lead to bed rest for days. It could lead to postpartum depression. It could lead to all these things, right? Because the purpose that you had aligned with so strongly for such a long time has shifted. And I think that that's what causes a lot of that. I'm not a female. So do not take me at my word with this because I can only remember things from female lives of mine as well as things that I've watched and witnessed in others. But I, again, have never experienced it in this lifetime. So I am not capable of speaking on it any more than just my own understandings. I'm just having this flash of you as a woman now. <laughs> it's like Jason as a woman in another life. Oh my goodness. But it's like we've all experienced both sides, right? It's like exactly. Yeah. So Amy asks about the fairy topic. I believe in elementals, fairies, gnomes, but I thought that these souls, if they do come in as humans somewhere or sometimes, oh, hold on. But I thought that these souls, if they do come in as humans, sometimes are in another reality frequency existing with us. I had no idea that they could be incarnated as animals. So now I have questions. What types of souls can animals have? Um, we'll just pause there because there's a few. Okay, so basically anything can enter anything in incarnation. That's the, that's the gist of it. So you have animals that can have fairy souls and things like that because that's what they're choosing. But it's really about a choice and it's what the world needs at the time. So without spending like six hours on this topic, Imagine that you're up here and you're ready to move to up here in the afterlife, so to speak, right? And you want to learn this lesson that's stopping you from moving into this new understanding of who you are in the infinite nature of all things. And then you're like, well, but how can you be in the infinite nature of all things and then still have progression? Because the infinite nature of all things. So 
that being said, that progression in the infinite nature of all things, where you haven't fully like achieved that state of awareness inside of time, which is what we call a metaphor of time, this process of incarnating in, you choose what you need, whether it's on this planet or another planet or whatever, and you choose loving connections that will help you to do that. And people are out there like, well, my father was abusive and blah, 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 blah. Loving connections up there do not translate to loving connections down here. Oftentimes, your worst enemy is your best friend up there. Why? Because they push you to grow. They help you. They take on the contracts no one else was willing to because they love you. They say, okay, look, I see that you need this thing and this thing's going to be difficult and no one else wants to do it because it's going to be difficult. So I'll come and I'll help. And that's one thing that's kind of interesting to understand is we take things personally down here, but up there, there is no personality in that sense. There is only divinity and divinity's desire to grow. So it's the same type of soul. Like they're asking about the characters, um, human souls, I guess, versus animal souls. It's just thinking about it from like a video game perspective. Maybe you're playing Sonic the Hedgehog Maybe you're playing uh, Demon Souls. You're just playing a video game. So there is a reality that overlaps this one. And there are actual Fae in there. And there are elementals and devas and things like that, right? That does exist. And some people choose to go there. When they leave, they all go to the same place. Up here is where they choose the video game. They play the video game that most unlocks and aligns with where they are in their own progress. So then they come here, they play their video game, they go back up there. There is this thing where people link up together to play that video game, which is always fun too, right? Multiple people coming together to experience something, but it doesn't have to be that way. Now, this is a very unique time on the planet because everyone who's ever existed as an earthling in any way, shape, or form, whether they're from Venus, Mars, Jupiter, doesn't matter, right? Like anywhere in the cosmos, fairies, unfairies, uh, devas, like it, it literally nothing matters. They're here. Why? Because this is the time that we have the capability to resolve all the ridges and move forward as an entire omniverse. That's hard to understand and conceptualize because most of you can't imagine the entire universe itself by itself. And then to think that there are multiple of those, that's enough to drive people mad. So to make things simple, you're playing a video game and they have the capability to play the same video game or a different one. Merlin and Morgana are playing different video games, but in the same video game. They're different roles rather, not the same, because we're all in the same video game. We're all on Earth together right now. So the Earth video game is being played. They're playing a different character. That's the best way to reference the video game. Nice. All right. Jamie's asking, I just saw the Eternals and I would love to hear your input on the disclosure. So many thoughts, the celestials, creators of the false matrix programs or of the galaxies and of all life, as they said, connection between celestials as portrayed in this film versus gardens of the galaxy. Okay. Look, <laughs> tons so the of only struggle here is I would have to do a private AMA to talk about movie lore because I respect that not everyone has seen Eternals yet. And I do not want to run that for everyone. However, if you have seen Eternals, you understand. And if you haven't seen Eternals, I've never had a stronger recommendation in my life than to tell you to go see that film. It is so well done. There, it's just, wow. And it'll all make sense in the next few months. You'll be like, oh, I, I get it, I, yeah. It is something that I could do though, and I might. Uh, but if that were to be the case, it would be, we'd have to create a group that, that's like on Facebook that's called the Eternals Discussion AMA or something. And then like everybody would enter that group and then I would do a live from there because I can't do it on my Facebook because then everybody that hasn't watched the movie would see it and that wouldn't be healthy. So I don't know. That's something that we might look into. Maybe. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. All right, Brittany's asking, you have talked a lot about why you personally don't recommend doing plant medicines such as ayahuasca. However, I was thinking about the topic of tapping into essences energetically without physically being near the object that's being tapped into. 
in a hypothetical situation, if a person was to energetically tap into the essence of plant medicine, such as ayahuasca, would that have the same or any consequences, unwanted attachments, distortions? I'm very interested in what you have to say around this. No, it would be totally fine. In fact, I think that one of the greatest things that we can do is spend time in nature with those plants. So I'm helping plant ayahuasca and well, technically ayahuasca is not the name of it, but I'm helping plant those plants all over the world already. Like that's part of CRM. Like we're going to be planting that stuff in Costa Rica. Why? Not to harvest, but to bring that frequency back into the world. Because when people harvest things, they take them the frequency from the collective and they keep taking threads of it. And because we have harvested so many of those things, or we've overbuilt other things like marijuana, that thing is like all over the world now. Uh, poppy seeds, all over the world right now, right? So many poppy fields. That saturates the collective. There's a balance that has to be met. But for so long, people have devastated and destroyed things in search of cures and problems and all this other stuff. And there's a lot of reforesting that has to happen with that because everything that is on this planet is important to this planet. Ingesting it is where the issue comes in because if you take something that is a frequency and you then imbibe that frequency for something, you've now empowered that thing to solve the thing for you. And eventually, and everybody has a different point, but eventually you've empowered it more than yourself. And that's what leads to the problems. So working with medicines is totally fine. I highly recommend it. I think it's a great way to do it. Just don't imbibe them, don't take them, connect to them, get to know them, have conversations with them. Meditating next to the leaf of the people is a powerful way to learn. Like the Amazon is one of the most powerful places you're ever gonna go if you wanna just learn. Just sit there in the forest and just listen. The way the monkeys cackle, the way that the caimans make that weird sound that I will never figure out how it's made. All of those sounds in the Amazon are the most powerful medicine that you're ever going to get because they're all working together and they're vibrating and they're creating this thing that you don't understand. But trees have different frequencies, depending on the type of tree. So when you have a whole forest working together, they cover a, an entire octave between all of them. And when we take one thing out, it doesn't sound the same. So I would say get to know every frequency that you can get to know. That doesn't mean that you imbibe it. doesn't mean that you work with it in that way. I, I still don't understand why people burn things and think that that's a wise idea. It's like, yeah. I'm going to burn this entity and it's going to be happy about it. Right. I, I can tell you right now, if you were to put me on a stake in the middle of, of a town square and burn me, I would not be happy. I remember many times over not being happy when that has happened. So that being said, I, I don't think that a plant would enjoy being caught on fire either. But I, I could be wrong. You know, I don't really have full memory of my tree lives yet. So Maybe, maybe I do enjoy being burned alive as a tree. Doubtful though, very doubtful. Oh man, my heart, that's such a good point. Whoa. All right, Ray's asking, I have some questions regarding the ingredients in the blue drink. I checked them out and it looks like it can be quite a pricey drink to make. I take mm -hmm. cell salts and sometimes take Gatorade. One ingredient in the blue drink is the citrus salts, which is an electrolyte. So I'm curious, what is the best choice for uh, resource wise between the citrus salts or cell salts and Gatorade and how about only using some of the ingredients in the blue drink or Willard, wa Willard water compared to the blue drink when looking at how much money is being spent on getting resources yeah so I uh, first of all I don't recommend that you buy this drink unless you want to and it's in front of you too the reason I do those videos is so that you have access to the same alchemy that I use from either a frequency perspective, like the, that, was, that was perfect. Did you plan that, asking that question right after? Because you have the capability to connect to these things. That's why I do videos of them and I show the different alchemy so that you can actually learn the combination or what I call the final combined. You can learn how to build that. You can also repurpose that. You, if Gatorade works for you, then work with Gatorade, right? Like find what works for you and be aware that this is an opportunity. I don't pretend to know better than you about you. 
and I never will because I, I don't know better about you than you. And so it'd just be arrogance to say that I do. This drink is what I personally love. I know it's helped a lot of people, but connecting to it energetically is going to tell you what you can do to repurpose it and build it differently. The simple fact that I built it just means that it now is available and you can unbuild it, which is why I show you the alchemy. I don't just do a finished product and be like, here, make this. I show you the alchemy in the videos. And sometimes they, they can become quite long because I do that. Like that last one, that not coffee one was, uh, was a very long video. But the process of making it is so important because you learn as the things connect to the other things, why they connect to the other things. And usually for most people, it's subtle, meaning that they don't actually know that they're learning it. But if you watch that video, it unlocks doors for you. And then you have to figure out how to make it your own. So I would encourage everyone to either work with the blue drink or make their own version of the blue drink. Maybe it's called the Gatorade yellow drink. I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that though. Always, always, always try to improve upon that which is, because that's how we move forward. Don't get stuck in the rotation of what is and only that. I'm always improve, improving. I make the blue drink. Sometimes I add cell salts to it. Sometimes I don't add cell salts to it. Sometimes I do this, right? Like I, I'm learning what works and doesn't work through an action, through wisdom. I had, so I recently got some not coffee and my order of uh, element also came in and I'm trying some new ones. And I know you had suggested the chocolate as like a in, into the not coffee or yeah, our frothy not coffee video, we'll post it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this like latte. I'm gonna do this cold latte with not coffee the chocolate element but I was like "Ooh, I have oat eggnog I was like that makes so much sense added that added some maple syrup and I was like I I don't know what just happened I think I did too many things here because it was like next level the like flavors oh my god it was wild huh. it was very interesting but uh I so don't I think was, I would do it again <laughs> when I was first coming into my alchemy I was still drinking alcohol and Jack Daniels was one of my favorite things for flavor. And I decided in my infinite wisdom as, as a teenager, that the greatest thing that I could ever come up with was Jack Daniels flavored macaroni and cheese. Oh my God. I was dead wrong. <laughs> and it's important to understand that the journey of alchemy doesn't mean that you're going to get it right every time. That was the worst tasting thing I think I've ever eaten. I've even tried other things like pickle flavored ice cream, which by the way, actually wasn't as bad. <laughs> so there are a lot of things in your journey to alchemy where you're just going to get it wrong and you're just going to go, okay, well, it didn't kill me. So what can I do better? Now I have this thing called Miracle Mac X3, which is phenomenal. I mean, people literally come for stays just to eat the Miracle Mac because it's so good. But it took 20 years to come up with that recipe. Like, it's not something that I was like, oh, I know how to make Miracle Mac on day one. No, I screwed up. I made Jack Daniel flavor macaroni. Like, looking back, there is no reason in any world where that would ever make sense. But sometimes you got to try it because you never know. It could have worked for all I knew. Now I know it absolutely 100% does not work. Never give up on your dreams. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sherry's asking some, well, on the topic of element, I did not plan these, but they just happened to flow this way. So <laughs> some people are talking about element on YouTube live. I was wondering if that would be in addition to the cell salts or if that is just another option for salts. Uh, yes. It's in addition, most times for me, like it's not like, so cell salts are different than electrolytes. They're completely different in the way that they function. So cell salts are what your, your cells need in order to handle electricity as well as to regrow properly and to heal. And electrolytes are really what help your energy system run smoother. So then you also have minerals and you have vitamins. Like your body requires so many resources, it's not even funny. And until you figure out which ones you're needing, you're not gonna run off them. And that's something to be aware of. That's one of the reasons why I love the bed so much is because of the capability to be given a huge spectrum of resources that your body then eventually learns how to run and create. But prior to the bed being a thing in this world, you, you had to really figure out how to get your resources in all other kinds of ways. So 
alchemy with the drinks and things like that has become something that was really important to me. I'm actually really looking forward to teaching spiritual bartending classes in real life someday, like actually like educating people on like how the things work and why the things work as like a class or something. It'll be fun. Maybe at the CFP. Oh, that's going to be awesome. I can't wait for that. Yeah, you'll have people lining up for sure. <laughs> well, by then it'll be, it'll work because we have room for like 300 people out there. So that's true. Yeah, we'll get you on stage with a mic. I know how much. Yeah, I could teach on uh, that would be awesome. So we have an amphitheater and then we have the stage on the lake. So like with the pyramid in the background, like you, it would be like perfect to teach right there. Oh, man. Yes. So much. Yes. All right. This is a dream. So they had a dream about coming down to earth. So they say, I'm not sure if this it was this life or a past one. I was in a place of light and we wore white robes. I remember it was peaceful and we all had a job to help the whole. I remember feeling like there was more to do and I wasn't fulfilled. So I came down as light. I tapped out some other male, taped out some other male. And he said, thank God you're here because this was harder than I thought and I'm ready to go home. What I saw on my way down was a dark industrial matrix kind of movie kind of theme. Once I entered officially, I had a last thought and it was, man, this is going to be harder than I thought. I've had the same thought many times in this life. My journey to this point started in 2018 when I hit my bottom emotionally. That year was a pivotal year for me. I also started meditation more lately and my body moves on its own while I sit there and meditate. I usually sway back and forth or in a circle fashion while I sit on the floor. Is this something I should worry about or is my body trying to tell me something? It's one of the quickest ways to get through ridges is your body whenever you're in a meditative state you like start to spin like this usually or sometimes like this right and then there's a rocking back and forth and all that is is it's creating microcurrents in your field that do this that massage and dissolve those ridges so when you get into deep states of trance it's pretty normal um movements seizing things like that whenever you're in meditation very normal as well for many years for me, I just had to lay on the ground and just convulse in meditation because my body had to clear out the misunderstandings that were in my cells. And that that's like a bit of an intense experience or in my bones, for instance, you know? So you tapped out the person that came before you and you said, hey, uh, I, I'm ready to take over and they're ready to leave. And yeah, it's harder than you thought. Well, in fairness, everyone here can say the same thing. Anyone who's been here on this planet thought that it was going to get easier sooner, and it didn't. And it got harder than they thought because most people signed up for a single timeline. There are 22 condensed into a single one now. So if you're over the age of, of 35, 36, somewhere around there now, you actually didn't sign up for the world that happened. Everything changed while you were here. And you could say a part of you up here knew that that was a potential impossibility because it was, but you still didn't prepare as if it was going to happen. We're ahead of schedule in that sense. And I mean, all the timelines merging as one was supposed to happen in 2056. So if you think about that, we're like here now in this way that we weren't going to be. And it's harder because we didn't have as much time to prepare the infrastructure that we were going to have at this time. We've had to prepare this infrastructure while being like, tormented in a way right and so there's a, a cleanup that's going to occur but we're all going to get to where we want to go and you're doing the work that you need to do if you're rocking back and forth and, and spinning you're in the process of cleaning up those ridges and making room as i said before it's enhancing your access clean up on aisle eight please <laughs> mm -hmm. clean up on aisle eight i was just oh, okay being silly. Um, okay, Lily is asking, I had a dream about six months ago that the only thing I could recall was the word Elohim. I think you pronounced it last time, Elohim. Okay. Elohim. Uh, can you point me in a direction that can provide more insight on Elohim? Inward. Uh, just, just take the direction that you're going this way and just like flip it and then come back. And uh, yeah, if, if you're working on that word, meditate on that word. That's one of the most powerful things you'll ever do. You can say it over and over again, slower in different intonations, keep playing with it until you have an unlock and then lots of memory flow. Cool. 
Winnie's asking, what is the light of God? I have used this process very successfully before, but there is still a shadow of doubt in my mind about what LOT is. I have it that since we are soul, are all aspects of God, the light of God is our soul, source essence. Am I close? Please clarify. I don't really talk about what God is because it's defined by each person. I can say that you are in your own understanding of it, that you are close if not really close, but each person has to define what it means for them. And that's, I really want to point that out. Like it is not for anyone else to tell you what God is, just as it is not for you to tell anyone else what God is. If this was a one-on-one -on -one session, that would have been a different conversation. I could have talked to you and been like, congratulations, you know, but like, I really want to encourage people to figure out what it means for them, because it might not be your soul's essence for you. That might not be the step that you're on. And again, there's no step greater than the other step. It's your step. So you have to figure out what that is for you. The light of God for you could be a camel. I don't know. Totally fine. If you love camels and camels solve the problem for you in that moment, powerful camel light of God. Congratulations. <laughs> Each person has to find their own way. And that journey of finding your own way is the most powerful journey you're ever going to go on and you're already on it whether you're aware of it or not linda's asking some leaders are using words like chaos decline disorder as coming up for us as a temporary experience before tranquility what do you say about this well i mean yeah we're in a world of chaos right now for sure but i don't think chaos is a bad thing i don't think it's a good thing either just like, I don't think order is a good thing or a bad thing. They're different things, right? So in 2020, January, we had this whole thing where the chaos timeline came in and basically destroyed everything that had been built. Everything. Was that a bad thing? No, because what happened after was all 22 timelines working together in their own ways to rebuild something better. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so. I think that that's human collaboration coming online in a way that it never has. And I think that people who have lived in the chaos timeline have something amazing to contribute. Once they resolve their fear and they realize who they are and why they're here and why they chose that particular timeline to learn from, what they bring is going to be something that we couldn't have gotten any other way. So I look forward to the collaboration that occurs next because the collaborative chaos is almost over and soon the collaborative solution begins. And when we all come together and solve the 22 so that there never was, and all that is, is one. I don't know about you, but that makes me very happy. Oneness for the win. Kimberly is asking, what role are other planets playing actively um, Sorry, what role are other planets actively playing right now, if any, in regards to Earth humanity's current ascension? I feel I have had a close relationship with Venus over the past few weeks. It feels wonderfully motherly, deeply feminine, loving. This presence feels intimately important to my journey. And I wonder if others experience something similar. Mm -hmm. Without giving too much away. So, you know how we have ridges? And when we come into contact with those ridges with others, we have insights, we have clarity. They basically go like this until the ridge dissolves into like a powder. And then we both process the energy and the emotion that was stored in that ridge. Galactically, planets have ridges too. So do aliens, so do people, so do animals, so do insects, so do bugs, all of it, right? Like everything that exists has ridges. So if a large group of spaceships full of extraterrestrial beings were to orbit the planet inside of the magnetosphere, what would happen? Downloads, lots of downloads. And there's this force that's a peacekeeping force in this universe that works together and they ally. And that group is currently helping this planet through presence. Are they visible to us? No, 
because our eyes can't see high enough to really connect to and see clearly. But our dimensional sight can. And so on a really, really, really clear day at night or in the daytime too, if you're able to, to see it, you can easily see that there is a lot of things up there. That information is being shared with us. We are unlocking those gifts because their ridges and our ridges are rubbing together and bringing out those memories. And so what once was just a human understanding is evolving into an omni-understanding. And that's what's freeing us from this world in the way that it is. However, it's really important to understand they're not our saviors. They're simply completing a mission that we said we would too. And our ridges are also helping them. We're working together to unlock the Omni perspective again. All right, Sandy's asking, can you go deeper into metaverse? Do you recommend preparing our avatar? If yes, do we need to imagine it or draw it or NFT? Hmm. So first of all, meta and metaverse, not the same thing. I wanna point this out because when Facebook renamed itself meta and said that they were creating a virtual reality based world, a lot of people didn't realize that there is a crypto version already created called the metaverse. And they are mistaking the two things as the same thing and they are not at all the same thing. So NFTs belong to the metaverse, right? There will be NFTs in meta. Will I be in meta? Most likely not. Meta is not something that I'm interested in playing in. I do not like what it dictates or the way that it feels. The metaverse, on the other hand, I'm actively looking at NFT video games because I love video games. And honestly, there are quite a few really amazing ones. I'll probably talk about some of those projects after I consult with them and get to know them a little bit better. Because if I'm going to be part of something, I really want to get to know the founder, get to know what it stands for, why it's being built, what it's actually working from. Because there is a lot of NFT gaming out there that's based on greed. And I'm not about to empower greed with finances to become wealthy. That makes zero sense to me. Freedom, I'm always willing to empower freedom with finances because I love to put my money where my mouth is. It's important to me to be able to put that energy towards it and vote with my dollar, so to speak. So preparing your avatar is one of the most important things you're ever gonna do if you're gonna play any video game. In fact, anyone who knows me knows I spent hours creating a character hours. Most people are like, ah, click done. No, nope. hours. Why? Because that character is a representation of me in the video game. And the more that I customize that character, the more presence from my life carries into that character that then amplifies in the game of the world. Why is that important? Because I'm interacting with, with other people. And so ridges are being resolved in video game format video game problems coming up in real life of the video game instead of suffering in this world. And so these problems then become solutions. I become a greater solution as a person who's playing the video game. And if you take it and you zoom out, you realize that's what's happening here. So I spent more than hours customizing this avatar. I, I would say I've spent, you know, 37 years, a little bit over. It's, uh, it's been a, a customization effort for sure. And I, I love how it turned out. I would be willing to take this body into other lives. In fact, I have, so it is what it is. But with video games, spending time on an avatar is not a bad idea because the more customization, the more you feel connected and aligned with it, the more it's a representation of you in that world. And this is important to understand too for those video gamers out there. Everything you do in a video game applies the same amount of karma as it would in real life. So a lot of people play video games as this avatar that they've created and they wanna get out their darker impulses. So they do that in the video game. And that's way better than doing it in real life. But if you don't resolve and forgive and heal, what happens here in this life is it starts to affect eventually this life because it's a persona that you've created. If you go back to uh, Bon Dune, which we call voodoo here, for some reason, but that perspective, 
you're basically building a voodoo doll when you create an avatar in a video game. And it influences and affects the world around you as well as you as a person. So be highly aware of that when you play and understand that the level of toxicity that you apply in a video game is affecting the level of toxicity that you hold in this reality. Be good in all things that you say and do, and you will find that goodness is your world. That includes video games. Wow. <laughs> I'm like replaying my video game days with like Call of Duty and stuff. <laughs> like, wait, Jason, what did you just say? There's nothing wrong with that. Playing video games that are shooters and things like that. As long as you forgive yourself. As long as you resolve the things. I used to play uh, first person shooters. I was actually a professional gamer for Halo. And yeah, it was, it was a whole different world. But playing those video games was powerful. It was very powerful. I learned so much about myself from having to learn to skate levels to all the other aspects of the game, right? Because, because I was a professional gamer, we would literally join as a group and perform the same movement together on the same map for 10 plus hours every week before we would play in tournaments. So imagine working on a single jump for 10 hours, just so that you know how to do the jump in real life, muscle memory, but the, the way differently. So in any situation, you have that capability as a tool. It's the same thing, but the toxicity, the emotions, the energy that get brought up when your character is killed in the video game by another character, that's real. That's the feelings that are coming up for you. And if you allow those feelings to run you, then you've empowered that version of you, which is why people often turns into more and more toxicity instead of less and less toxicity because they don't realize that they need to unplug and resolve. Whoa, all right. I think that's a great update for people. Lots of gamers are like, what? So thanks for sharing that. Um, okay, we're gonna do one more question from the ones that were sent in. There's still a ton, but, and then switch over to Facebook. How does that sound? Okay, yeah, sounds great. I still cool. have the time necessary, so we're okay. Awesome. Okay, so Lindsay's asking, I was wondering if you could elaborate on how you get your information. I've always assumed when you talk of meditating, you are communicating with your higher self, multi multi-dimensional selves or God, but there are times when you've mentioned they, and I wonder if they are extraterrestrial, extraterrestrials, ascended masters, spirit guides, or dot, dot, dot. So most of my information comes from meditation. Sometimes I do go to council meetings and on, in those meetings, I do have an interaction with they or them would be probably the proper pronunciation at that time. But yeah, I work with a team and that team's awesome. So it helps a lot. But most of my information comes from my own understanding of the world. Nice. We get asked that question a lot. Now the wait, the next question that people are going to ask is who are they? What is the council? Blah, 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 blah. Exactly. My mind went there too. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody Everyone on the line? Everyone has their own council. Everyone has their own connections. I would highly encourage you to find yours. <laughs> and pre-answering that one right off the bat. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, anybody with us, uh, if you've already asked the question, re-ask because I will only see the last few and we'll do as many as we can. All right, got lots of, got 284 people with us today. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I think I only lost like nine friends after that last post. That's it? That's yeah, it. well, I haven't checked this morning. I jumped straight into this live. But I remember when I posted my first post that was talking about anything, and I was actually talking pro-America, not, not anything else. I lost, well, like, like a thousand something and then like hate mail for, for months. So it's cool to see how much has changed in the last year. Exactly. I remember that one and it feels very different now. So completely different. Yeah. I haven't got to read the comments. I will, by the way, for those of you that are playing and, and resolving and, and sharing openly. Thank you so much. I am going to read those and I am going to respond. But uh, yeah, it, it's cool to see because even people that disagree, so far at least what I've seen, were disagreeing in an honorable way. Meaning, hey, this is something I don't believe in, but that's okay. And I think that that's huge progress to show how much we've grown in the last few years. 
Agreed. Congratulations to us. Yeah. So Debbie's asking, how do you feel about Sunday's 1212 portal? I guess Sunday on December 12th is coming up. I feel called to gather some high energy people together for a sound bath. And wow, I've just realized all the people I have in mind have planted or are planning to plant source seed trees. Something going on here. Any feelings about this? I didn't know that 1212 was going to be a Sunday. Um, Sundays are my Jason days. And uh, I take them off from the world, so to speak, until I wake up. So that means I don't make any plans on Sundays. And then I wake up and then I just see what's there for me in that moment. All, all my other days are pretty much planned out before like three to four weeks in advance planned out. So Sundays are my day to like, just be like, oh, what am I going to do today? No clue. Oh, I'm going to sleep all day. That was awesome. Thank you. Because I would prefer to sleep all day every day if I could, but it's just not how it works. So extra feeling that lately. Yeah. As for 12, 12, uh, I don't really know. I mean, I've never really put significance on certain dates because of the, the way that they balance out or anything like that. It's more along the lines of, I just look at the day and it glows and I go, oh, cool. Something major is going to happen on that day. So that's kind of how I've always done my predictions in the past was I would look at like the difference in the stream and how it was affected, whether it was like a major raise in the stream or it went down in the stream. And then I could figure out kind of how that changed by putting myself in that future potential to experience how it felt and then overlay it on top of me. So I could look at that and see, oh, okay, well, this is what changed for me. So now I understand that concept. And I, I don't do that really anymore because there's so many changes with the vote every three hours that it's not really worth it. But I would say that if you feel encouraged to or called to hold a group gathering on 12-12 because you want to, by all means do it. Because collaboration with people that are awesome usually leads to awesome things. But I would also encourage you to not have to worry about certain days. Just do it when you feel called to. Like be free to have fun on any day because every day is a blessing. Oh, yes. All right. Jessica is asking, I've been doing the five minute backlog meditation. And when I enter the house of my soul, there is a living room full of things. This is before entering the door on the left or the door on the right. Do I surrender the living room into the light of God too? Also, when I enter the wing on the left and enter the first door, the room is empty, but there are a lot of things outside the room, like trees, lakes, dragons. I continue to the next room and the room is empty again, but there are still things outside. What do I do? So you don't worry about the outside. That's a great question though. So everything outside of your mansion is a whole nother thing that we'll work on someday. For now, you just wanna keep your mansion clean. Eventually, when everything in your mansion is clean, then you will venture out into the world. And when you venture out into that world, it's gonna be a lot of lessons really fast, but you need to have room for those lessons. So the whole practice of clearing out the backlog is simply making room. And once you've done that, then you know if you're, the, if you're the person who walks around the entire mansion in five minutes and finds nothing to do, then congrats. It means that it's time for you to go outside. But also the next time you do it, go check everything around first. Because when you go outside, you're going to take on new things that you haven't before. And unknown variables often cause backlog. The number one thing that causes people to stress out faster than anything else, it's not overwhelm. It's the simple unknown variable that causes the overwhelm, right? Overwhelm is the side effect of unknowns. Think about it. Anytime you try to do anything new for the first time, a level of stress and panic that doesn't make any sense usually occurs. Why? It could be the easiest thing, like making a, a meal for the first time or meeting somebody for the first time. It doesn't make any sense. Well, it does actually, because it's an unknown variable that is going to influence and change the way that you live your life forever. And that fear that occurs from that is rational in a sense. Does it mean that you should stay in that fear? No, I would say activate bravery and step forward. But when you leave your mansion for the first time, you're stepping forward into a world of complete unknown variables, which is why you wanna make sure that your mansion is completely clear and that you have as much space as you need to know when to open that door. Because once you open that door, there's no changing. Like it will, you will forever be changed in that sense. Like there's no coming back from that in the same way that you were before. And if you have windows in your house, you're already a step closer. A lot of people don't have windows. They walk into the rooms and they have pictures on the wall, but they don't have windows. 
I think mine have windows. I love how everybody has a completely different, it makes sense. It's all our own individual spaces, but yeah. Okay, very cool. Um, Sophie's asking, why would someone experience an alien Pleiadian abduction? Because they wanted to. Cool. Rachel's asking, other than crypto exchange, what are some other uh, suggestions for increasing monetary resources in responsible and supportive ways for all beings? Well, the first step is realizing fair exchange, right? Like crypto has a capability to enhance life if you are in a stable space. That's important to realize, right? Because if you are going into crypto as your savior, then you're not in a stable space. If you're going into crypto because it's in front of you to do, then you could be in a stable space. If you go into crypto as a savior, or you go into anything as a savior, you're taking away your capability to be whole and intact. And you're building from a false foundation on day one which means you're preparing for a fall. It will, it is inevitable, it will occur. So when you're working on any type of monetary solution, you want to make sure that you are that solution, that your time, your energy, your value is in fair exchange. And when you have that, then you can move forward into anything else. And usually when you're in fair exchange with your world as it is, the next thing comes right in front of you and you know exactly what that is. Nice. So Brittany's asking follow up question to the one earlier when you were talking about burning entities such as plants. Were you referring to things such as dried plants, i.e., sage, Palo Santo, or did you mean burning plants that were still rooted into the ground? I mean, it really depends. I would definitely never burn a plant that's rooted in the ground on purpose. Uh, Palo Santo and other things, if it's harvested properly, which is dead wood, that's a different experience, right? Like you're like uh, in the Amazon, there's tons of Palo Santo that is just all over the place. If you cut the tree down to, to burn it, that's one thing. But if it's fell wood, meaning that it is already expired, that it's already completed its life cycle, then all you're doing is helping send it home. To me, I don't really consider that so much of burning the thing. It's not like taking a living person and putting them at the center of the square and burning them alive. You're taking something that has already transitioned. I don't like to burn things that still have their resonance and their frequency. Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. And a lot of people will say, well, if you burn live Palo Santo, it's stronger. And I'm like, stronger in what way? And, and that's, it's, it's up to you in, in whatever way you feel, right? Like I'm not telling you what you can and can't do or should and shouldn't do. For me personally, I use fell wood Palo Santo because I've just always loved Palo Santo. I love the way it smells, I love the way it feels when it clears spaces and you can get it in Peru and mass. There's a lot of really great places to find Bellwood Palo Santo. Every time I go to Peru, I have a shaman that I go and I buy it in bulk who goes and picks up wood from the Amazon, never cuts a tree down, and it, it works. So I think each person has to find out what works for them in that sense. Uh, another way, if you don't want to use plants at all or anything like that, get a spray bottle, put a few sore seeds in it, put the water in there, shake it up, and just spray your house. It'll feel completely different. I prefer that over everything else, but I really love the smell of Palo Santo. So I still do it, just but more for the, like the, the smell and the, the feel of it. But the clarity, uh, there's nothing stronger than source seed water I've found so far. And if you want to really up it, you, essential oils work really well too, so. I've been loving that. The source seed water with some a little bit of lavender oil around mm -hmm. my space and also like above my head. Yes. A couple times a day and clearing that, oof, that's like magic. <laughs> Before the signal stopped being broadcast, I used to require everyone who came in my house to be sprayed down with lavender source seed water. Like literally people just like, really, Jason? I'm like, yep. <laughs> and so it was a whole different thing back then though. So Jenny's asking, and I can relate to this, my feet situation. My souls have been burning and vibrating a lot. Any information? Um, yeah, I mean, you're grounding. Right? like all that information is running through you and you're unlocking. So all that information coming through you in, in a lot. One of the greatest things you can do, Epsom salt soaks for your feet. So powerful because it will change the alkalinity of the water. It will allow the magnesium and it will create a current where all that extra energy just comes into the water. And then you just dump it and you can give it to anything that you feel called to. Uh, if you are going to pour it down like in a toilet or down a sink, 
then just connect to it and just see yourself sending love through it. Because that density is still good for the earth. It learns from it. It's actually why our world is the way that it is, is because we stopped giving our density to the earth in a respectable way. In the past, we used to actually connect to the earth and we would give it our density so that it could transform and transmute it. One of my prayers every morning in the shower is I take all of the density that I'm carrying and transmute it into whatever the earth needs. And then I give that to it. I transmute it for it so that it doesn't have to work extra, but I transmute it into what it's needed for. That's the same thing as like what I do with everything in my life that no longer serves me. I turn into 100% lighter greater and restrain it back into my divinity. Like that's what I do. So each person has their own way of doing it, right? But for the earth's density, I just transmute it and hand it to it. Awesome. Uh, so many questions are coming in. Just want to be mindful of time too. So let me know how you're doing. I have two minutes and 20 seconds. I actually set a timer because I have another session after this. Perfect. So let me just see here. Um, had to screenshot a bunch because Facebook is moving so fast and I can't scroll up. So one moment. All right. A lot of people are feeling this. Why do I feel I'm in January already? <laughs> yeah, because you are. I mean, like we celebrated New Year's already. So like, welcome to 2022, guys. Uh, the discovery transmissions are in full effect. I think we've done two and doing a third one this weekend. So like, we're getting there. I feel like we're starting to get our, our feet and our foundation of 2022 now. Because, you know, when you first transition into a new year, it's like two to three weeks before you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I got the hang of this. Because it's an entire container, like all of 2022, all at once. Well, that's what Celestial New Year's was, was the 2022 container. So for those of you that are very active, you've already started to figure out what 2022 represents for you. And that's huge. So as you can tell, it's a lot of discovery, hence why it's called the year of discovery. But that process of coming into that, yeah, that takes like three to four weeks, which we're coming up on right now, actually. So most people do feel like they're in January. It's an interesting time. What's really interesting is, is in Texas, at least where I live, it looks like it's January outside, which is strange. So all the things, but, but yeah, energetically, we are in 2022. So doesn't really surprise me. Grace is asking, I had a feeling the overlay was over on Tuesday, but then I saw your post about the layer for this month was already completed. How come this layer was so quick? Well, what, no, the layer, layer and overlay are not the same thing. So I think that's what we're talking about here. The layer of health is still very much in effect, right? The overlay is the false matrix and true reality were coupled like this. And as of today, they've begun this, right? And then at 5 a.m. tonight, they do this. And at this point, it's called the point of no return. It's 5 a.m. tonight. And then we go do this. And then you see this false matrix is no longer in this, the screen because it doesn't exist. And there's a cleanup that will occur. And I think that that will take all the way up to August, most likely. So that process is that it no longer has the influence though, right? Because the separation of the false matrix and true reality gone. Like that's, that's what we want. No more resistance, no more pressure being put on us from the false matrix so that we can actually clearly make decisions again. Does that mean it's gonna end overnight? No, and you don't want it to. You want it to end in the way that it needs to end and that's gonna take time, but you wanna see progress. And if you're paying attention, you're seeing progress. The world is realizing things world is saying things. You can't talk too much on this, but I will tell you that you will notice that as we progress forward in time, that the true reality is born physically, and it will be no question for anyone of what true reality is by the end of 2022. We'll all be like, oh, okay, I can see where we got misled. I can see where we made the wrong turn. No big deal. Uh, we can move forward, right? Because again, through forgiveness, all is possible. Amazing. It's probably three, 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 your time. Actually, it probably isn't because your clock is weird, but. <laughs> yeah, it's three, three, eight, my time, but it is actually three, 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 my time. <laughs> so, so yeah, perfect timing. Love it. 
Love that the timer just went off. Uh, thank you guys so much. I would stay longer if I could, but I do have to prepare for another session now. So love you guys. Have a wonderful one. Thanks for the amazing questions. Anything that didn't get answered, it's going to get answered in the next AMA. And we're just going to keep going and doing them until there are no more questions. So there'll be one a month, at least maybe two. I don't know. We'll see what January holds, but uh, we'll work there. So if you have more questions, if these created more questions for you, whatever is the thing, just ask them and we'll get to them. And some of them might not ever need to be asked because they might get solved naturally. Never know. All right. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.